only one spur goes up with them. Have, have. And when they when touch, they there's two contact points that touch before the other two. And then it's carried up into the air. When they fuse, it's like nuclear fusion, except it's human fusion. There's a mass loss of the proton. One heat abstraction goes up with the electron, spins around, comes back down into the proton to form the mind, and the mind can be reduced to the mass. I feel as though people have called me here to elect you to judge me, put me in jail. What would you like us to do for you? I'd like you to get me off a cigarette, get me dried out, clean dumps off, so I can get a job in the bank or go to medical school. We live in a cesspool, a septic tank, a gigantic sewage complex in which runs the dregs, the filth, the misery laden slop. Race of man, his hatreds, his prejudices, his passions, and his violence. And the keeper of the sewer, man. He is a scientifically advanced monkey who walks upright and with eyes wide open into an abyss of his own making. His bombs, his fallout, his poisons, his radioactivity, everything he designs as an art for dying is his excuse for living. And has it occurred to you that the things you've been eating over the last couple years might be turning your bones into sawdust. No, I mean, we live in, a, in an exquisite bedlam, an insanity. Maybe all the more grotesque by the fact that we don't recognize it as insanity. What is the one thing about this country that bugs you the most? Well, whatever it is, you should clean up this city here, because this city here is like an open sewer, you know? It's full of filth and scum, and sometimes I can hardly take it. Whatever ever becomes the president to just really clean it up. You know what I mean? Sometimes I go out and I smell it, I get headaches, it's so bad, you know? And they just like, they just never go away, you know? It's like, I think that the president should just clean up this whole mess here. He should just flush it right down the fucking toilet. The universe grows smaller every day. And the threats of aggression by any group, anywhere, can no longer be tolerated. There must be security for all, or no one is secure. Now this does not mean giving up any freedom. The machines are everywhere. Oh, you fire all your zealous people! You'll make a great sound smack if you owe them. But for everyone you destroy, hundreds of others will be built. And they'll demoralize you. Break your spirits. Create the rips and tensions in your society that no one will be able to repair. And when we come here to live, you, friends, demoralized, fast, will fall without even a single shot being fired. The machines are everywhere. You're all the same dark, pretty way you demand and insist on knowing every private thought and hunger of everyone. Your family for our policemen, we created a race of robots. Their function is to patrol the planets in spaceships like this one and preserve the peace. In matters of aggression, we have given them absolute power over us. This power cannot be revoked. At the first sign of violence, they act automatically against the aggressor. The penalty for provoking their action is too terrible to risk. The result is we live in peace, without arms or armies, secure in the knowledge that we are free from aggression and war, free to pursue more profitable enterprise. Now, we do not pretend to have achieved perfection, but we do have a system. I came here to give you these facts. It is no concern of ours how you run your own planet. But if you threaten to extend your violence, this earth of yours will be reduced to a burned out cinder. In our world, there will be no emotions except fear, rage, triumph and self-basement. The sex instinct will be eradicated. We shall abolish the orgasm. There will be no loyalty except loyalty to the party. But always, 
there will be the intoxication of power. Always, at every moment, there will be the thrill of victory, the sensation of trampling on an enemy who is helpless. If you want a picture of the future, imagine a boot stamping on a human face forever. The moral to be drawn from this dangerous nightmare situation is a simple one. Don't let it happen. It depends on you. Did it ever occur to you that some of these scientifically advanced monkeys make bombs as a simple expedient for survival? That across this planet there are other scientifically advanced monkeys who would pulverize us into dust if they thought they could do so with impunity? I don't need a lesson in current events. I'm pretty well up on the time. Though the freedom-loving monkeys make bombs, well, the aggressors make bombs. Ultimately, somebody pushes a button, and just as ultimately, the Earth disappears. A few germs will rise up out of the rubble and wave microscopic flags of victory and shed a few microscopic tears for the race of men. Harvey, are you content with this kind of status quo? Are you satisfied with this kind of 20th century? Yes, we need to respond to this 
and you make sure that you hide cameras everywhere they go. And it's free to three hours. I have some people to give you a small for the show. I read in a medical journal recently that a number of doctors have more to go to place my job and try to be devices under the scan of physics, which is the reason to make sure that they don't get them.
a special, a special Of enlivening this consciousness is negativity. It starts to recede. 